back in session with Professor P. I hope you guys are staying safe and healthy. All right, let's start with chapter four in archaeology. And once again, you can follow along with your concept sheets or you don't have to. It's whatever. All right, Colt, this chapter is really about explaining the past and understanding cultural change and cultural history. Um, so let's start with the descriptive process. Really, this, the descriptive process really wants to look at the archaeological data, data. It wants to look at patterning. It wants to look at the cultural traits in time and in space. We do dating methodology for this, radiocarbon dating. We look at layered settlements. We do a lot of different things. With descriptive process, we could look at um, why change happens, like invention and diffusion and migration and things like that. The normative view is a little bit different. It wants to study culture throughout time. So describing culture sort of as it changes. So why did we go from stone tools to pressure flaking to Acheulean tools? Like it wants to look at a change in a sequence of time, right? Which is a little bit different. So that becomes important. Let's get to descriptive um, models. So the, descript the descriptive view includes things like invention. Invention is basically the creation of a new idea, right? So we could look at, like I talked about before, why did we go to Neolithic revolution? Why did we go to agricultural development? Instead of hunting and gathering, that would be an invention. The automobile changed us how and why, right? Things like that. Diffusion is the borrowing of cultural traits between societies. Things like trade, trade routes, right? We still, sometimes we will take stuff from a culture and sometimes we reject it. I always tell my students, think about this. If I have a cell phone, for example, and I threw it in the 1950s, it wouldn't diffuse. It would come right back here because it wouldn't be ready for it. When we look at diffusion, we really looking, we look at it being selective as well. Not everything is going to diffuse. It's a borrowing of cultural traits between societies. Societies affect us. We affect them. There's different kinds of diffusion, but we're not going to get into that. Uh, migration. Migration is really when societies deliberately try to move. It's the movement of people um, through vast spaces, right? Um, we look at different kinds of migration, but it's important to understand how that changes society. When people are migrating, they are leaving cultural traits behind. They're influencing culture. There's lots of things. Smaller scale migration happens. Groups of people move in and settle somewhere and change the, the cultural landscape. So there's lots of things going on with migration. All right, let's get to genetics and DNA. Those are powerful in the field of archaeology and anthropology because they become powerful tools in studying human populations, right? We could look at our genetic codes, genomes. I mean, now we go, this is really cool. We could look at this in a whole different way, right? Looking at, you know, empty DNA, looking at lineages. Now, a lot of you guys have done your, you know, your, your actual genetic code to see where you're from, right? And it's, it becomes sort of a cool thing that archaeologists get to utilize as well. All right. Processual archaeology is a different kind of approach that does like deductive analysis um, and hypothesis and gather data, but people really aren't part of the analysis. They're really looking at the cultural system, but not really the people within the cultural system, all right? That's really how that one uh, is sort of set up. Cultural ecology wants to analyze the relationship between humans and how they adapt in their environment. So it's a relationship between humans and their, their natural environment, right? How are we relating to our natural environment? General systems theory is similar to functionalism that I talked about. It wants to look at the relationship between things and the system. All right. So if we look at cultural ecology or whatever, right, we could look at how we are adapting to the system and then we transform within the system and that each part of the system plays a part. We take it out. The system starts to erode. Right. That's general systems theory. Multilineral cultural evolution really looks at that. It wants to look at the evolutionary tracks of change how we adapt to change and move, right, and change over time. All right, that's basically what that is. Post-processual archaeology is really cool because now the people become important. We could study ethnic minorities. We could study women. People become active agents in the system. Agency means that you have individual choice, that you're an influencer, right? So when you when you look at that, people become part of the study with post-processual archaeology. They become meaningful. People create culture. People create space. People are now, we could look at morality, emotions, social responsibility, right? We look at people within society, all right? Cognitive processual archaeology wants to study human behavior. We want to study the whole arena of human behavior. Cognition, right? Within that cognition, why do we make tools? How are we smart enough to make tools, right? This now, we want to analyze this. 
external and internal changes become very important because when we look at external and internal changes, external changes are always about the environment. All right. So because of um, a drought, how did that change us? Right. We used water less. We were doing conservation. Maybe we didn't use water bottles. We used refillable bottles. We started to recycle, right? External changes are always brought about because our environment had a change. Internal changes are those behavioral changes that make us change. Something like capitalism, right? Like how did capitalism uh, affect us? Right. So you say, OK, the introduction of money came about. We started to go to stores and buy things. Right. We didn't do trade as much. We weren't reciprocal as much. Right. Remember, one is always about the environment changing. The other is about us actively sort of making those changes. Right. Um, and then the effects of those changes. Right. Become quite important. Um, and that's really that chapter. Right. So I hope you enjoyed chapter four. Right. If you have any questions, you could always email me. I hope you're having a great day. Bye. See you next time.